What's up guys? Today we're going to be looking at two different types of books. Now I do have 10 books all together. Um, seven of them are the more background and knowledge, um, more of the idea of penetration testing, the scientific method behind it, networking, operating systems, all of that good stuff. And then three, you could probably say three or four of them are more handbooks that you might keep with you at all times, take notes in, um, refer to while you're on the job, that kind of stuff. So we're going to start with the more idea-based uh, background knowledge and work our way up until we hit the more handbook. These are actual commands, actual real-world situations kind of things. So let's start with networking. So obviously any book on networking or CompTIA Network Plus would be a good book. Um, even Networking for Dummies, I have it somewhere over there, was okay. Um, this is my college textbook that was recommended to by my professor. And this is the one that I used to study a little bit for my Network Plus video. Um, I do have that and I will link that up, up here, over there somewhere. Um, it was an all right book. Um, it did have everything that I needed for the Network Plus test and more than I needed for the class that I was taking. Um, it went over subnetting, um, password authentication protocol 802.1x, uh, TCP versus UDP, different IP address standards, DNS, um, old stuff that no one uses anymore. Well, I guess a lot of corporate environments might actually use a lot of old stuff. The differences between different wiring standards, how to wire ethernet, how to do all sorts of stuff. Um, it even talked about how Wi-Fi bounces and diffracts and reflects and all sorts of good stuff that you probably won't use as a penetration tester, but it is nice to know in case you do need to troubleshoot something or you're making your own tool and you need to know how something works in the background. So it's just a good book and I would recommend a read or at least a skim through um, in order to understand how networking works. Number one, down. Number two, very similar, except this is the security-based book. Um, this was the second class that I took at JC during high school and it didn't teach you much, sadly. I already knew most of it. Um, but the book was pretty good. It did have a lot of things, um, mainly like case projects, like homework assignments and like labs and stuff. But it did have chapters that had some good stuff and stuff that I didn't really recognize as penetration testing. So a lot of it was physical security, which does make sense when you're in a corporate environment in a building where servers need to be locked. Uh, cameras need to be placed at entrances, biometric locks need to be used. You need to have two factors of, of authentication and not just like Google Authenticator or email or something. You need to have biometric and it's like something you are, something you know, and something you have. So either a password, biometric, or like a key card. So key card is something you have, biometric is something you are, and then password is something you know. You just got a little little background in Security Plus right there. So number three, the Linux Bible. So this is a ginormous book. Um, I hope no one has ever read the full thing through. Um, it is more or less of a dictionary kind of thing where you need to know something. You go and look it up. Um, it is... How many pages is this thing? Oh my goodness. Sorry for the page crumpling on the mic. It's probably loud. Um, it's about 747 pages and they're not small pages. They are large pages. Um, but it is very good if you are learning Linux and you need something that is reliable because the internet, yeah, it's good for searching things sometimes, but it is good to have a book where you know, hey, this is the right way to do this. Um, this is how I should be, be doing this every time. Um, 
it's good for Ubuntu, Debian, Kali, um, basically any Linux distro. It does have different commands based on the type of Linux. So like Debian is different than I'm trying to think. I use Debian most often because I use the, use straight Debian, Ubuntu, or Kali, and those are all based on Debian. But there are other types of Linux out there. I'm not trying to discourage anyone and not trying to uh, hurt my reputation here as a online hacker persona. Um, but yeah, we're going to move on from there. So that was Linux Bible. It is a very good book. It has a lot of good stuff. As you can see, I didn't make it very far, but whatever. Now, this is actually a book that I read all the way through. Um, I hoped it had a little bit more on how to use specific programs, but the other books will get into a little bit more of that. This is more of a book on Kali Linux, um, not necessarily the programs that it has inside of it. So. It has a little chapter on security assessments, doesn't really go on very much depth on how to do that, but it does go into a lot of the settings that are Kali specific. So settings that are not available on other um, Linux distributions. Um, it does go into a lot of just generalized Linux stuff. So it is good even if you're using Parrot or Ubuntu for your penetration testing, just to know what Kali recommends. Um, it's a lot of settings and upgrading and updating and really nice logo. I love the dragon logo and I don't know why. It's just really nice. Um, it gives into a little bit of history of Kali and how it was originally backtrack and morphed into what it is today, the rolling Kali distribution, um, the different websites and how to create a bootable Kali USB and uh, virtual machines and the settings recommended and all that good stuff. Um, I'd recommend it and it's also just a cool looking book to be honest. Uh, it's got a nice little little cover here. And I like the feel of it, to be honest with you. And that leads us to number five. So this is a book I picked up at Barnes & Noble one day because I said, ooh, a penetration testing book. It must, it must teach me something that I don't already know. And it did. It, it definitely did. Let's go to the... It's more of a generalized book where it goes through each area of penetration testing, but not very in depth. Um, I would like a book that went like, instead of one book that goes through 13 chapters, I think I need, oh, that's 19 chapters. I think I need like 19 books that go through each chapter. Um, but there is a lot of good things that it opened me up to, uh, like intrusion detection systems, intrusion prevention systems, um, covering your tracks, detecting and targeting wireless networks, mobile device, and building a lab or a virtual lab for penetration testing, which are already things that I was kind of aware of, but it just opened me up to them a little bit more. It does have a little bit of background on networking, as all penetration books should. Um, different types of scans, different types of lab stuff, Bluetooth hacking, IoT hacking, just a bunch of good information. So the next five-ish are more handbooks and real-world situations that you would actually use. Um, and to start that off, we're going to start with real-world bug hunting. Um, this is a field guide to web hacking. Um, I like the little praying mantis bandit on the front page with the wanted poster. Um, but this does go over cross-site scripting, bug bounty basics, open redirect, um, request forgery, SQL injection, server-side request forgery, OAuth vulnerabilities, reporting, 
all the good um, web-based stuff that I don't know. Um, I don't know much about web-based exploitation or bug bounties, to be honest with you. Uh, one time we had a CTF competition and there was a whole bug bounty slash web page exploitation part. And I just, I dumped that on the rest of my team and I took like literally everything else. Um, we did not score very well on the bug bounty part because, uh, because I basically taught my team a lot of what they know and I couldn't teach them anything about bug bounties. So that kind of sucked. So I wish I had this tool, not this tool, this book a long time ago and that I actually read it and learned everything that it had to offer. So yeah, I would highly recommend getting this book because this is a very real world perspective and I think it will help a lot of you in your endeavors. And that takes us to the next real world book, The Hacker Playbook 3. So there is a one and a two. Um, I did opt to go for the three because it is the newest and in a world of penetration testing, Something a couple years old is almost obsolete unless it's dealing with generalized concepts. If anything is working with real world applications and it's more than a year old, it's basically useless. Everything just gets updated and new things come out so quickly that it's, it's so imperative to be up to date on everything. Um, this goes over a lot of in depth it does go over some web application exploitation which kind of carries over from this book um, some websites to learn some stuff some easy stuff to learn yourself and it just goes over different things that you should know as a penetration tester and have in your arsenal in your head up here that you can just pull out and do when the opportunity arises or when a client requests it it's a really good book. I'm gonna have to read this one and might make another video on it, just a more in-depth analysis of what, what it has to offer and everything that I've learned from it. And then we have two books that go together. We have the Blue Team Field Manual and the Red Team Field Manual. Manual. So these are basically little handbooks that you should honestly just keep in your bag with you like in your laptop bag just keep both of these um, they go over basically just commands it's like a little like cheat sheet of commands that you should do and like what they do and how to do them and all that kind of stuff um, it's nice to have it's definitely not something you should like read it's not really a readable book it's just basically a cheat sheet. Um, I would consider like sk skimming over it and just so you know where everything is. Um, but obviously it is organized into chapters and if you knew what type of thing you needed, you could just go into that chapter and read that chapter. And the red team, it's the same thing, but it is, even it has scratch pads in the back so you could write your own commands that you need. Um, the text is a little bit smaller on the red team one. Um, they updated the blue team. I think the text was this small earlier, but they updated it to make it a little bigger. Um, same thing, but it's more of the hacking instead of defending, or instead of the after after the fact cleanup and stuff. Um, again, good to have if you are a part of the red team. If you are a aggressive hacker and not a defender, then get red team. If you are a defender, get blue team. Honestly, I would recommend just having both. Um, it's good to know what the other side is doing and how you can counteract that. And that brings us to the tiniest, cutest little book that I've had for a long time. Um, as you can tell, it's very dusty and dirty and grimy. Um, this is the Hack 5 Field Kit. So if you have a Wi-Fi pineapple, a rubber ducky or a turtle i would recommend i think it actually comes with it to be honest with you i don't think i would have bought this book if i didn't get my um, pineapple but it just tells you how to use all of the hack 5 hardware so that's the wi-fi pineapple um, 
the rubber ducky and the turtle. So the rubber ducky is like a USB um, injector. It like holds code and you can just plug it into a machine and it'll run that code, whatever you want it to do. It can steal passwords and stuff and then hold on the USB and then you can go on your way. The Wi-Fi pineapple is like a evil access point, an evil twin, or you can do an evil twin. It can also do other things. Um, it's a cool piece of hardware. I haven't really done a whole lot with it, but I do want to do some of that in the future. And then the turtle, I think it's an ethernet adapter that just captures everything on an ethernet interface. So if you just want to plug that into uh, a network and then you can just take everything that runs over that ethernet cable. Um, it's a good little field kit. It tells you how to use all the stuff, how to get everything done. And honestly, if you don't have it, it's kind of a good thing just to know, hey, these things are out here. And if I want to get one or if I want to protect against it, this is the stuff it can do. And this is what it's going to look like if I ever got it. So if you guys like this type of video, me sitting here, showing you guys things, unboxing things, talking about things, Instead of me staring at a screen and showing you guys commands and how to crack passwords and do different penetration testing real world applications, then let the YouTube algorithm know, hit like, get subscribed, hit that bell icon so you guys get notified of my future videos. And if you guys like my other videos, go watch them and go hit like on those videos. And as always, I'll see you guys all later. And I'll see you guys all later. What? I hit my hand. That hurt. Oh, that is a hard table.